welcome back to Biblically Blonde. In this video, we're going to talk about God's covenant with Abram in Genesis 12 and 15. So let's just get started and see what God has for us. Alrighty, in this video, we're going to go over Genesis 12 and 15. Those are the chapters that specifically deal with God's call of Abram and his covenant with him. Now, there's two chapters in the middle, obviously chapters 13 and 14. Those are going to be in the next video. Those chapters deal with Lot. And so right now we're just going to focus on 12 and 15 and then stay tuned for the next video as we're going to tie it all in together in the dealings with Lot. But specifically right now we're looking at this guy named Abram and what it is that God promises him and what God commands him to do and this covenant that he's making with him. So what happens, right? What's going on in Genesis 12 and then eventually in Genesis 15? So it all goes back to Genesis 11, 27 through 32. In Genesis 11, we actually meet Abram, and we meet his family, and we meet his wife, Sarai. Now, we learn that he comes from the line of Noah, so this isn't a stranger to us, but we're certainly being introduced to the next big character in God's plan for us. We see that him and his family are living in this town of Haran, or this land of Haran, and God's going to appear to Abram, and he tells him, he actually instructs, instructs Abram, to go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land that I will show you. And that's really all God instructs him. He's very kind of simple, doesn't give him a lot of information. And we don't really know how long it took Abram to actually leave his household and leave his family, but it probably took him a little bit, but eventually he does. And so this is a time period where your household wasn't just you and your wife. This was servants. This was extended family. So yes, he's leaving his family, but he's taking a lot with him. He's taking all of his, you know, all of his possessions, all of his servants, and certainly his wife. We also learn that with that, he is taking his nephew Lot. So let's keep that and remember that for the next chapters. But just keep in mind here that there's people and family members with him, but basically what he's doing is he's becoming a traveler, a nomad. He's not going to have a set place where him and his family belong. He's going to continuously be traveling, stopping in places, and it tells us in scripture that everywhere he stops, he actually creates an altar to the Lord and gives thanks to God. So while Abram is traveling, he eventually stops at this place called Shechem. And there God is going to talk to Abram again. And he says, this land that you've been traveling, this land that you're currently in, I want you to know that it's going to belong to you and your offspring. You're going to be a blessing to them and to others. And that's all he says. Once again, just very limited information. Now, we also learn that Abram and his wife are childless. Sarai is barren. And so for this man who's very much older in age, this is shocking. How could he possibly have this land and his offspring belong and own this land and live in this land and cultivate it and create a community where he doesn't even have one child, let alone multiple childs? He doesn't understand, but he knows that God has made this promise to him. Abram continues traveling, and eventually, because of a famine, he is led into Egypt. We see this time and time again in the Bible from now on. Egypt's going to be a place where people go when they are trying to escape from something, whether it be a famine or for safety, things like that. Now, Egypt's also going to be very, very important with Moses and also the Israelites. So Egypt is an important place, and this is the first time we see someone actually going into Egypt, and it's Abram. Now, Abram goes in there, and he's afraid. He doesn't know what to do. His wife, Sarai, it's telling us, is very beautiful. So he tells his wife to say that he is her brother, and she is taken by Pharaoh, and we can assume by scripture that she's definitely raped. She's definitely used for her beauty, and you can take with that what you'd like, but it's certain that, that they definitely take advantage of Sarai, and I could go on about how much this makes me mad that Abram allowed this to happen to this woman, but God used her barrenness to protect her, and she does not conceive a child through Pharaoh or any of his servants, and eventually Pharaoh finds out that 
Abram is actually married to Sarai through God. God kind of appears um, and informs him of this. Pharaoh is obviously very, very mad and sends them on their way. God protects them once again because Pharaoh could have killed Abram and he didn't. So they leave Egypt. Him and Sarai continue on their travelings, going from one place to another into the land of Canaan. There we see God come to Abram once again, and he makes a covenant with Abram. And he's very clear here. He says, yes, I told you your offspring, but let me be clear here. It will be your son, your son with Sarah. Your son will be the offspring and then his offspring and so forth and so on. This will be the land that belongs to you all. And so God promises this to Abram. Abram does not have to do anything in return for it. It is something God makes with him, a covenant with him. And he shows him that he is true to his word. And all Abram has to do is keep following God along on this journey. Alrighty, so that is definitely not the end of Abraham or Abram as we will. We have many, many more chapters to come. But that is kind of the what happens when we first learn about Abraham and we first learn about his wife and Lot and whatnot and so forth. So that. Alrighty, so why does this happen? What is the original purpose of this? Well, let's remember that this area of Genesis is written by Moses during his time in the wilderness, right before they're about to enter the promised land with the rest of the Israelites. And so Moses is trying to set the Israelites up. He's teaching them their history. He is reinforcing to them why this land belongs to them. They are about to go into an area that has been promised to them by the Lord. And Moses wants to tell them, where it came from, where, why they follow this God of Abraham. He's trying to show them that all of this has meaning and it's been destined from God from the very beginning. So what does this tell us about God? Well, it tells us that God keeps his promises regardless of the other person's actions. We are just getting started here with the story of Abram and all of his adventures, and he's going to mess up a lot. Overall, Abram is regarded as a man of God and a holy man, but he messes up. He is not perfect at all. And God never wavers from his covenant. When he makes his covenant with Abram, he keeps it from the start all the way to the finish. There is nothing that Abram would do or could do that would stop this promise and this covenant with him from coming true. We are children of Abraham. We are children of Christ. And we believe in these stories. We believe in Abraham and his descendants and so forth and so on. And we're in this line. And so no matter what we do, we belong in the new covenant, the new relationship that we have with Jesus Christ and his death on the cross. So just like there was nothing Abram could do to mess up his covenant with God, there's absolutely nothing we can do to mess up the covenant that God made with us when Jesus Christ died on that cross. I also want to do a quick little point about God. What we can learn from this is that he will use people for generations beyond what they can even imagine. So when he tells Abram that this land will be belonging to more than he could ever fathom and his offspring and, and all of this. And at this time, Abram doesn't even have a son, let alone a daughter or, or anything. Abram has nothing. How could that even be possible? And yet now in the year 2020, when I'm filming this, he is the father of multiple religions. He is the like the basis of what a lot of religions look to. And so God used a man for so many years to come. I mean, thousands of years to come. And so let's keep in mind here that we may feel so small, like we don't really matter. I know sometimes I'll be like, my videos don't matter. Or, you know, what I did doesn't matter. I'm just little old lacy and you know, I don't really have anything that I can do. You know, this doesn't do anything for the world or I'm not really making a difference for Christ. I know we all think like that. But let's remember that God will use one person for great things for generations to come. And so we may not see it now. Abram didn't see it on his death, but he did not see that he was going to be the father of so many people. And yet he is. And so that we can cling to. We can cling to the fact that God will use us in ways we would never imagine. So then finally, how can we apply Genesis 12 and 15 in our daily life? Well, one way that I really think about this is asking myself, what has God promised me? God makes all promises that are very different in everyone's life. But we, if we're walking with the Spirit, can feel inside of us what we know God has called us to. 
maybe not big things, but today. What has God called you to do today? And what are you doing to fulfill it? I know for me, it can be very, very simple. I'll wake up and know, okay, today God has called me to be honoring in my household. God has called me to get the things done, get my chores done, go to work, help provide financially for my family, even on the smallest level. Or if I am scheduled to volunteer at church, to show up and not do it, even if I don't feel like it, to do what I have been called to do, which is to serve in the area. Another way is these videos. You know, I took a, I take, I took a long break this summer from making videos. I, I went through a miscarriage and I just took some time off for myself and really focused on, on healing and recovering from that. And just about a week ago, God was saying to me, you know, I just felt it. Lacey, go make a video. It's time. Get back into this. Get started again. This is what I've called you to do. And so I knew today I have to film this. Today I'm going to sit back down in front of this camera. I've taken two months off and I'm going to make this video. And I'm stumbling on my words. I'm like, oh, I haven't been in front of the camera in so long. I haven't talked in so long. And this isn't my best video. But God has called me to do this. And so what has God called you to do? We all have something from the little things like I talked about of just going to work, providing, um, doing your household duties, things like that, to the bigger picture. Have you been called to serve Christ? Have you been called to tell people about the Lord? Have you been called to help teach the word, teach the Bible like I do? Have you been called to help worship and to stand upon the stage and sing and, and give glory to God? We all have been called to do something for God's kingdom. And so what are you doing to help that? If you don't know what it is, pray about it. Ask God to show you. I will guarantee he will. And then what are you doing each day to follow that? When we look on the story of Abram, he did not tell him everything. No, he gave him little by little by little. He first came to him and all he said was get up and leave. He didn't tell him where. He didn't tell him what was going to happen. He didn't tell him anything about the future. He just said get up and leave. So God will give you a little bit each time. But you have to be willing to follow it. You know, I still don't even know where Biblically Blonde's going to go. I'm a little channel. All I know is he's called me to make these videos. And so I make Genesis. I make Genesis 12 and 15. And then the next video, I'll keep doing it. And as God shows me his little drops of seeds as it go along, that's what I will follow. But all I know is he's called me to make this video. And I hope whatever he's called you to do, you will follow. So ask yourself, what is it? Pray about it and then do what he has called you to do one little step at a time. All right, y'all. This is my first video back in like two months. I know I was all over the place. Sometimes it's it's just hilarious. If I if I make videos a lot, I'm on it. I pr I'm just practiced it. My speech is so much better. And then when I take some time off, I'm like a new kid, and I have no idea what what I'm saying. I'm talking fast and and all of that. But I hope y'all stick with me. It's it's great to be back. I hope you uh, took something away from this to grow closer in your walk with Christ. If you enjoyed these videos, please subscribe and like it, and I will see you next time. Bye!